أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of God most gracious most merciful I've been honored moderator Imam Rashid Iman our fellow panelists uh, all present here this evening our honored and respected leaders in society uh, beloved fathers and mothers present brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and peace and blessings of God Almighty on you all the motivation for the program here this evening, I would just like to, in my capacity, uh, put some context to that. Um, our role as faith communities uh, in the future of our country is essential. It is imperative, it's important. We know that religion as our panelists have indicated, it is a bridge, and at other times, it causes bloodshed. We believe that God Almighty, in His wisdom, in His infinite wisdom, had sent His revelations, He sent His messengers, and all of it by its own plan, for the guidance of man. At Ipsa, in particular, we have embarked upon the development of research programs for our students. And one of the areas of research that have been identified is the area of interfaith dialogue and peace studies. And we, inshallah, by the grace of Allah, by the grace of God, endeavor to take this platform and take it forward with a view of coming out with pieces of research, publication, that will inform those processes uh, for our students, especially at the postgrad level, as well as how it filters down into the undergrad level. And so the ethical vision for the role of religion in our country is, is the question which we felt we should get ourselves talking around as people of faith, faith leaders in our community. Uh, for we have, I think, a burden of responsibility on our shoulders uh, at this juncture in our history, uh, probably at a higher level than, than, than other members of society. Ethical outcomes in the interpretation of scripture is not axiomatic. This sounds peculiar, it sounds ironic. But the 8th century scholar, Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah, he stated, the Sharia or Islamic law in its entirety is about wisdom and achieving the welfare or the maslaha of humankind and people in this life and the next. It is based in its entirety on justice mercy and goodness. Thus, any ruling or edict that replaces justice with injustice, mercy with its opposite, the common good with corruption, or wisdom with nonsense, can never be part of the Sharia or Islamic law, despite attempts to interpret it like that. In Islamic philosophy, the operationalization of ethics in edicts and conduct are proffered to be guaranteed within the framework of the higher purposes or the maqasid of the Sharia. The stated objectives of God's revelation is guidance for all humanity and establishes the unity of humanity, the human race, to emanate from one single soul. And the soul emanates from God, as we've heard dear about this evening. Stated differently, the Quran establishes our humanity as sine qua non, a prerequisite, to be recipient of divine guidance. It follows therefore that faith communities should incessantly collaborate to protect the humanity of people.
For without humanity, there will be no divine grace. And we have had a discourse that emanated around the Muslim world with this topic called Al Insaniya Qabla Tadayyum. Confirming humanity before religiosity. It is telling that Islamic philosophy elevates the preservation of life as one of the foremost purposes of revelation. And there are many references which tonight is, is not what we want to share. Further to the process of our humanity, God confers each soul human dignity, karama, as a God-given right. Sine qua non to human dignity is the legal and moral prescription of discrimination that erodes human dignity. As a nation and as a community, we know that we still struggle with the remnants of 350 years of oppression based on racial discrimination. The prophetic example to Muslims is too forceful to be overlooked. Hence we find that sometimes we formally eschew racism, yet essentially we are compromised. This is a major objective to be systematically championed in all faith communities. Abject poverty inequality, joblessness, per prophetic teaching can lead to disbelief. Al-Fatr yu'addi al-Kufr was the adage of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. It is therefore no longer acceptable for welfare operations to overlook the essential need for the restoration of human dignity through poverty alleviation interventions. It is once again telling that not only is the preservation of human dignity per se, but also the preservation of income or livelihood, mal, elevated as one of the higher purposes of the Sharia. And again, is this let me perhaps reference this particular prophetic teaching because we all know it by heart, yet we recite it in a very narrow fashion at variance with the teachings of former scholars in our tradition. So we know that again, the whole requirement of faith, the Prophet peace be upon him, denied the presence of faith within a person who does not love for his brother or sister that which he loves for himself. And the scholars were at pains to confirm that it is not your brother in faith or sister, but in humanity. So the way we do charity, the way we do welfare, we need to critically introspect and so to ourselves as a Muslim community, we have found the emergence of a shattering discourse of toxic charity and toxic da'wah, mission work. This has been emerging from among nascent and young Muslim communities uh, in our country. Rectification herein is sometimes non-existent and sometimes painfully slow. However, the recognition for designing ethical interventions that promote human dignity and financial empowerment is gaining somewhat uh, of traction. An important divinely ordained mechanism for social harmony and cohesion is interfaith relations, as well as intra-faith relations. And one of the mechanisms 
that this engagement hinges on is the acknowledgement and the recognition of the God-ordained principle of free will on this earth. Freedom of choice. Freedom of conscience. The Quranic phrase, لا إكراه في الدين. There is no compulsion in the affairs in the matters of faith. And so, it is intertwined and tied up into the God-given right to human dignity. We have this God-given freedom of conscience which equally allows us to speak our minds yet never infringe the human dignity of the Arab. To Muslims again, the higher purposes of the Sharia guarantees freedom of conscience in the very first degree, Hayfud Deen. Allah lays down His divine law on earth. And Prophet Ibrahim referenced this earlier on when he said that God Almighty, in His law that applies on this existence here in this world, keeps a certain group of people in check by virtue of another group of people. And that, had that not been the case, he says, you would have found the destruction of monasteries and of churches and of synagogues and of mosques wherein the name and the remembrance of God is upheld. Thus the Quran promotes diversity as an inner feature of creation and a cause for reflection on the infinite power of the Creator. Diversity in faith, nations, tribes, cultures, tongues, pigmentation is His design. And faith communities in South Africa find a largely enabling constitutional environment to foster and cultivate these values in society. There are also areas of tension which we have no option but to engage and navigate within an ethical framework with patience, respect and tolerance. Finally, for religious responses to fulfill an ethical role with integrity, it must of necessity provide solutions that are realistic and relevant to society to address an intellectual and leadership crisis in our community. And so, it has been confirmed and is common cause that faith communities have a vital role to play in political, social and economic transformation of the country and in bringing about reconciliation between blacks and whites, between different tribes and different faiths. Religious leaders must have a vision of a humane and just South Africa in which human rights and civil, political and economic rights are not only enshrined in their constitution but are observed and practiced in everyday life. I thank you. Assalamu alaikum.